Do you feel overwhelmed with the vast number of plugins out there? Well, you're not alone. And if you ever struggle to choose between plugins, keep watching because in this video, I'm going to share four plugin mistakes that could be ruining your mixes. But first, if you want to learn the exact seven plugins that I use in every mix after years of research and trial and error, make sure to grab the free PDF in the link below or in the link you see in the video now. So let's dive right in. Mistake number one is worrying too much about the choice of plugin because I want to make this very clear. It's not the plugin that matters, it's how you use it. Yes, different plugins sound different, of course they do, but if you spend all your time worrying about which plugin to use, trying out different plugins, buying new plugins, learning new plugins, you're constantly wasting your time and focusing on the wrong things. Instead, you should be focusing on improving your skills, getting better at using one or two plugins for each type, one compressor, one EQ, and we're going to elaborate more on that later. Because if you spend all your time worrying about which plugin to use, looking at online forums, browsing reviews online, that kind of stuff, that's all time that you could be spent practicing. That's time you could be spending making music, mixing, actually learning how to use these plugins rather than obsessing over which plugin to use. And I'm talking about free plugins here too. I'm not just talking about premium plugins. Don't obsess over free plugins. There's so many free plugins out there. And if you're constantly in the heat of the mix trying to decide which plugin to use, you're wasting valuable time there in the mixing process. Your ears are getting more fatigued. You're losing objectivity. And instead of getting on with the job, you're worrying about which plugin to use. So honestly, don't worry about it. Don't worry if you're using the perfect plugin for the job or not, because it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you pick a plugin and you move forward and you learn how to use a small number of plugins rather than learning how to use a large array of plugins not that well. It's better to use one or two plugins very efficiently. So while we're on the topic of free plugins, let's talk about stock plugins because mistake number two is skipping over stock plugins and moving on as soon as you download your door and do a few mixes, you then think, oh, okay, now I need premium plugins. I need to start downloading free plugins. You don't. Stock plugins can you get you 90% of the way to a professional mix, if not more. You can do a professional radio ready mix in your door with the stock plugins that come with it. Every door now comes with a great selection of stock plugins. There's really no excuse. And if you skip over this, you're skipping over a crucial learning phase. I'm going to give you a quick comparison here now. So this first track on the top is a finished mix, um, unmastered, but with premium plugins. And then on the bottom here, we've got the same mix and I replicated every move with stock plugins. There are going to be some slight differences in terms of balancing, uh, but I tried to get these as similar as possible. Let's just have a listen. So this is with premium plugins. And this is with stock plugins. Premium plugins. Stock plugins. So I don't know about you, but I can hear the difference. The premium plugins, there's more depth. There's a bit of kind of a flat sound to the stock plugins, but it's very, very discernible. It's a very small difference. The stock plugin mix is 90%, 95% of the way there. And that's just with stock plugins that come with the door. Whereas the final mix with premium plugins, that's with hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of plugins. And that's the difference it makes. It's very small. It's actually quite subtle. And until you can get a really good mix with stock plugins, there's absolutely no need to start buying plugins. And I want to make that clear. Don't skip over that phase. Make sure you learn the stock plugins that come with your door before you buy plugins. If you think that your mixes aren't good because of your plugins, if you blame stock plugins for your bad mixes, you're not ready yet. Because until you can get good mixes with stock plugins, you're not ready for premium plugins. Mistake number three is having too many plugins. So if you do 
start to venture outside of the world of stock plugins and you start to download free plugins, you start to buy plugins. What is a rabbit hole that you can very quickly fall down and end up buying plugins? So many people now, companies now run sales all the time. I'm guilty of this. You're probably guilty of this. I have a ton of Waves plugins, for example, because they're always running sales and they always seem so appealing. These are just Waves plugins that I have. And I'm sure some of you out there will have way more than this. But this is a problem. This is a big problem because now it's starting to get overwhelming. Every time you open a mix, you're not sure which plugins to use. Every time you start a mix, you've probably got a new plugin that you're experimenting with or trying out um, or just plugins that you've never used before. And every time you open this plugin window to do something in a mix, there's just so many options here. It's overwhelming. It takes you a while to decide what to use, um, which compressor you're going to go to, which EQ you're going to go to. As soon as you start to build a too large collection of plugins, it starts to get overwhelming. It's going to affect your mixes. So don't buy plugins for the sake of it. And I would actually recommend going through and removing plugins that you don't use so that they're not even here in your door. And I need to do that. I'm guilty of this too. I need to go through and remove a lot of these plugins that I don't use anymore. I haven't done this for a while now and I tend to do this once every few months. I highly recommend you do the same. Just get rid of the ones that you're not using. Even if you've bought them, it's a sunken cost. You just need to get rid of them so that you can focus on the plugins that you know, focus on the plugins that you know you can get a great sound with and focus on the plugins that are going to save you time when mixing because you're not worrying about which plugins to go to. So don't keep buying plugins. And if you do have a ton of plugins, try and delete some of them. My recommended approach is to have one plugin for each type. So one go-to EQ, one workhorse EQ, one go-to compressor, one go-to reverb, one go-to delay, etc., etc. So if you want to find out what my go-to plugins are after years of trying this out and spending thousands on plugins, I put together an ebook that walks you through all of that. You can grab it in the link below or the link you see in the video now. And now moving on to mistake number four, which is obsessing over analog modeling plugins. Now, this is kind of a weird obsession that people have. There's this idea that analog equipment or at least plugins that emulate analog equipment is the kind of holy grail of all of this and that we want to go back to those days of analog sound. Well, for some genres, maybe that is the case. If you're working with music and you want it to sound kind of old school and analog, then fine. I can't tell you what to do, but I highly recommend you look forward. And look at what we have available to us today that people didn't have 20, 30 years ago. And instead of obsessing over analog emulating plugins, use newer digital plugins that are way more versatile. Because let's take compression as an example. If I want to use a compressor and I want to use hardware emulation, I have a ton of options available to me. I've got the API 2500. I've got the CLA-2A, which models a LA-2A compressor. I've got my Fairchild emulation. I have also got, if I go to Slate Digital, here we've got an 1176 emulation. We've got another VCA emulation. There's just so many options now. If you go down this route of having hardware emulations, you end up with a ton of plugins and every time you're not quite sure what to use. Whereas if you just have one go-to plugin, something versatile like the FabFilter Pro C2, or a distressor emulation, something like that. It really doesn't matter. The stock plugin, stock compressor plugin in your door is versatile because it models everything. Logic, we actually have different emulations if we want them, but we've got all the controls we need. We've got a high range of attack times. We've got a range of release times. We've got everything we need here. Something like the Fab Filter Pro C2. This can do everything. This can emulate any kind of old school compressor if you know how they work. So. What I'm trying to tell you here is just have one compressor. So instead of every time I want to compress a track, I think, okay, what do I want to use? An LA-2A? Do I want to use a Fairchild emulation? Do I want to use an 1176? Do I want to use this or that? Instead, I just load up my go-to compressor like the FabFilter Pro C2 and I can do anything with this. I can do absolutely anything and I'm just bypassing that thought process. Same can be said for EQ. I pretty much use, again, FabFilter because they're more forward thinking in the way that they develop their plugins. This plugin is great. It sounds great on everything. It's great for fixing. It's great for removing resonances with you know notch filters like this. It's great for boosting the top end with shelves. It's great for boosting the 
up a miz to bring out aggression. It's great for everything. I don't need to use this in conjunction with other EQs or pole tech emulators, that kind of stuff. And if these words don't mean much to you, then that's fine because you really don't need to know what any of this means. All you need to know is look forward, look at the digital plugins that are versatile and that you can use in any situation rather than constantly looking back at analog emulations. So that's it for today, four plugin mistakes, just to recap there. Mistake number one was worrying about which plugin to use rather than just getting on with it and learning. Mistake number two is skipping over stock plugins. Mistake number three is having too many plugins and instead try to just have one plugin for each type and learn it well. And then mistake number four is obsessing over analog modeling plugins. So again, if you wanna find out what my seven go-to workhorse plugins are, grab the free PDF in the link below or the link you see on the video now, and I'll see you next week.